Kia ora te whanau, no mai hoki mai. Now, look on the screen. Does this look familiar? Forgot password. Why do you think on every website they have this option? Forgot password. That's because everybody at some stage in their internet journey has forgotten a password. I have myself. I don't know how many times I've had to reset passwords. So here's the problem. In crypto, when it comes to your wallet, you can't click on forget password and reset it. You have full control over all your logins and your data. So this is a huge problem in crypto and the biggest problem in crypto. Scams are big, but losing your data is bigger. And that's because we are always reliant on our memory or our habits and the way that we set things up when we initially install anything. And unfortunately, in this digital age, a lot of things are very convenient and people are lazy. And an example is this. Now, this happens on a consistent basis. People install MetaMask on their phone. They think that it's indestructible. They don't back up their seed phrase. They might write it down or they just don't back it up correctly. They might put it in a notepad or something on their phone. Their phone gets lost. They get a new phone. They install MetaMask and then they try and recover their funds and they can't. Okay, because without your seed phrase, without your private keys, there's nothing you can do. So the problem is self-custody is that you have to make sure that everything that is sensitive data with logins, with PIN numbers on devices. This is PIN numbers for you if you have a ledger or any device that requires a PIN number, any device that requires a passphrase for hidden portfolio accounts, any wallet when you set it up that requires you to back up the seed phrase. This is the problem. This is the main problem. And I have solved this problem with a backup solution. But first, I just want to show you this. If I click on this, and we look here, the first article by Cointelegraph. All, all I did was put in can't access my crypto wallet. The first one, unfortunately, recovering a crypto wallet without the seed phrase is generally impossible. The seed phrase is the only way to access the private keys. That's it. This is not your, this is not, you don't have the option to call a help agent or ring up a company and say, you know, I need to get into my account. There is no one to help you. It's self custody. You're on your own. You are your own bank. You are responsible for all your data. And if you don't set this up correctly in the beginning of your journey, you're going to have problems right throughout your crypto journey. You might lose your crypto because you can't access your wallet because you haven't backed up your seed phrase or your passphrases or your pin numbers or your, if you want to call them passwords. Or you click on links and get scammed because you haven't set up your seed phrase stack properly. So the first thing I implore you to do is definitely scan that QR code or click on the link in the description and come and join our community because in there it's all about security and you'll learn everything you need to know. I just want to show you this here. First things first, what's wrong with the seed phrase? Seed phrases are effectively the master key to your cryptocurrency. They offer you full control over your digital assets without reliance on any other party, such as a bank, a credit company, or an exchange. However, with that freedom comes responsibility. And being your own bank means that there's no call center for you if you forget your password. Seed phrases need to be kept safe from attackers whilst always being accessible to the owner. This is not an insignificant challenge. And for this reason, lost Bitcoin is an official term. It refers to Bitcoin that the current owner can't locate, either because they forgot their private key or have lost their hardware wallet device. Estimates suggest that around 6 million Bitcoin or 30% of Bitcoin supply have been irretrievably lost, amounting to five, 554 billion in value. Now that is just staggering. Now what's even staggering uh, on top of that is the fact of how many messages I get and how many emails I get daily from people that are losing their seed phrases or lost their private key or, or forgotten their passwords. It is an epidemic. Now, I set out over a year ago to try and solve this problem, uh, and I built a application called The Vault, and I've got videos on the channel 
from way back when I first released it. Uh, and I wanted to show you how this workflow works because this solves the problem with human error. You do not need to remember anything. You don't have to remember anything because it's always going to be in plain sight for you. This solves one of the most crucial problems in crypto, not only in crypto, but just in general for getting passwords and sensitive data. This solves that problem. So I'm going to show you how this works. This is the vault, and this is what I've created. Okay, now it's been through many iterations. This is the current uh, version, all right? Now, you will need to join my community to get access to this, okay? So you can scan that QR code, or like I said, pin comment, or in the description. Now, I'm going to take you through a process and show you just how easy this is, okay? Uh, and then you'll understand how this is so uh, such a good innovation and, and an amazing addition to your backup uh, protocol. You should always have a security mindset protocol when it comes to crypto. If you are new to crypto or even advanced, you have to back up your data. You have to do it properly. If you don't, somewhere down the line, you are going to lose your crypto. Full stop. That's just the way it is. Everybody's done it. Even I've done it originally in my journey. So I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to pull these files across to here and just place them here. So now with the vault, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of all the things. All of these are just basic up the top here is just menu items where you can access everything. OK, uh, all the socials and, you know, resources and everything down here is the main. These are the main tabs and all the tools and everything that you need. This is, however, the advanced version. There are two versions of the vault. This is the advanced version, but I want to show you this version. So first off the bat, when you open it, the tutorials, you have all the tutorials here on how to deal with it, <laughs> how to learn. Now, this, like I said, this is the advanced version, but the core functionality of what I want to show you is built into the other version as well, Okay, the basic version. This is how you do it. Very simple. Here. I've got a text file, which I'll just pull over here. And this here, if you look at this, this has got some just sample seed phrases, some addresses. You could have private keys in here. You can have pin numbers. You can have whatever you want. OK, so this file has just basically got all this data in it. OK. Now, the innovation here is you embed that data into an image. That image can be any image that you choose. It can be an image where you take a photo. I've used that uh, painting right there as an example in another previous video where I took a photo of that, put it onto my desktop, and used that as the image. If you have a family portrait, it could be something like this. I've got a family, I've got a picture of my son up here. It can be a family portrait that you've got on your wall. It can be a picture of a landscape. That you have on your wall it can be any picture that you've got on your wall it can be any physical photo it can be anything that's physical it doesn't even have to be physical it can be just an image that you have online the reason why a physical representation of the image is good is i'll explain that soon but if it's a landscape take a photo of it put it on your desktop and you've got an image okay it could be pets it could be anything i'm going to use a pet image as an example if i double click this and open this. This is a image of uh, Willow, American Eskimo, and a Korat, and that's Holly. Okay, so I got Willow and Holly. All right. So I'm using this image as the example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to embed that data in the image. Once the data is embedded in this image, I can then make copies of this image, and I can put it anywhere. I can put it in in Google Drive. I can put it in OneDrive. I can put it in the cloud. I can put it in Dropbox, I can put it on hard drives, on devices, on flash drives, it doesn't matter, I can put it anywhere, I can use it as a screensaver on my phone, I can use it as my desktop background, I can use it for whatever I want. The point is, is that image will always be in plain sight. And if you've got a physical copy, then you'll always know when you look at that, that that's your seed phrase, or your data. You're always going to have it in plain sight. No one will ever know the wiser. If you, the only way that anyone can ever find out about this is if you tell them. That's it. No one will ever know. 
There's over 17 billion images online. The chances of you, of somebody, first knowing what image it is that you've got data on it, secondly, they'd have to figure out how to get that image if you've got it in a cloud storage, which is not going to happen. Those two points right there, it's not going to happen. The only way that anyone would ever know is if you told them. And then thirdly, even if they got the image, they'd have to try and extract the data, which is encrypted. So they couldn't do that. And then if you follow my protocol, it wouldn't matter if they, even for some reason, which is from looking at AI and, and giving all the information at 0.001%, it's not going to happen. But even if it did, you can set it up so it wouldn't matter if they got your data anyway, if you use a protocol that I use, okay? But in this, in this uh, video, all I want to do is just show you the technology and the innovation that I've created and how this works, okay? So we've got the image, all right? All I need to do, I've got the data here, okay? So this is the data, all right? All I need to do is come to the embed tab right here. Now there's an option down here. We're not going to worry about that, but you can actually encrypt the data before you even put it in the image if you wanted to. But we're just going to use this option, which is the core functionality. All I'm going to do is drag the text file in here and the image in the top one. Okay, so image successfully added and the text file. Now, all we need is a passphrase, and this passphrase will encrypt the data in the image. Okay, now here's the beautiful part. You're thinking to yourself, oh man, I'm going to have to remember a passphrase. No, you're not. You're going to have to remember, you don't have to remember anything. Here's the beauty of this. What we do is we have a look at our image and we create a description for our image so that it's a description for the image. No one's going to know the why's and no one's going to know any different. The image the passphrase is going to be the description for the image. So I've already set this one up. So if I right click on this and go to file info, you can see the description is this. Okay, so I'm just going to control C and copy that. Okay. And then I'm actually just going to remove it because we're going to start again with this image. Okay. So that is our passphrase. So basically you are creating a description of the, of the image. If it's a landscape, image, then you create a description of that. It could be, you know, this is a, 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 a painting of, you know, um, a landscape in New Zealand, in the South Island, when I was visiting 2018, for example, right? You can have whatever, you want the description to be as natural as possible, but relative to the image. That is your passphrase, okay? Now we can test the passphrase. If we come over to the passphrase tab here, and I just pop that in here, Okay, so we've got it. We've got our description for our uh, image in here, and then all I need to do is click on Estimate Crack Time. All right. Now you'll notice that this is 100. It's entropy, which is randomness. This is 174 bits of entropy. Now, if you didn't know, a 12-word seed phrase is 128 bits of entropy. So that there past phrase is stronger than a 12-word seed phrase. And a 24-word seed phrase is 256 bits of entropy. Okay, so this is fine. And it's not going to be brute forced, all right? So now that we have this, okay, I'll just copy that. We'll come back to our embed. So we have our image that we've chosen. We have created the description for our image, which is going to be a passphrase. All we need to do now, we're on the embed tab, is we grab the image, put it in the top, grab the data, all our seed phrases, put that in there, and in here we pop in that passphrase, okay, and then all we do is click on embed seed phrase, all right, and now what it's done is it's embedded the data, so our seed phrases in the image, and it's encrypted it with our passphrase, all right, and it's also embedded the passphrase into the image as metadata, so as a description, okay, so now when we click on this image and in the future and we look at file info, here it is here. So this is just, it just looks like a description for an image, but that's actually our passphrase. It's in plain sight. You never have to remember it. Okay. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you know, what happens in 10 years time? What happens with the vault? The vault will always be available. You can, you know, get the, uh, 
the basic version, which does exactly the same thing as I've just showed you. And you can have multiple copies of it, put it wherever you want. It can be on a, what I recommend uh, in my course is that you, uh, you know, have a dedicated offline device for anything crypto. I have a phone that is dedicated offline device that only ever connects to my private Wi-Fi. It hasn't even got an active phone number. It's all it's used for when it connects to my private Wi-Fi. The only reason why I ever do that is to make a transaction uh, from a portfolio wallet. That's it. So everything crypto is on that. I also have devices that are, uh, you know, just cold devices that don't go online that I have the vault on. Okay. Now, the vault doesn't hold any information. It's just a tool. It doesn't hold any information. So nothing is stored in memory. Okay. So if somebody was to open up the vault on a computer, break into your house for some reason, and they were, you know, able to look at your computer and figure out what the hell the vault was, and then open it and look at it, they'd no, have no idea how to use it and what to do with it because there is no data in it. It doesn't keep any data in the memory. Okay. So now you're probably asking yourself, okay, well, what about when I want to re retrieve the data? Okay, so this is how simple it is. All you've got to do is, remember I said you don't have to remember anything, but you do know that when you set it up, you do know that the image has your passphrase in it as a description, right? You can't forget that. That's just because it's in plain sight, right? Now, what I also suggest you do is if you have taken an image, a photo, and that image is actually a photo of a physical painting or a portrait or something, on the back of that portrait, the back of that image, write down your passphrase exactly how you've got it in the app here, how you've encrypted. Because then you've got a physical copy of it. This is just in case. You don't have to do it. If anyone wants to look at that picture and turn it around, it just looks like a description of the picture. No one's going to know any of the wiser. This is why it's so incredible to have something in plain sight and you never have to remember it. So this is how easy it is. If we come to the extract tool, and let me just wipe that out. And all I'm going to do is grab the image, okay, put it in here. And then I need the passphrase, so I can just right click on the image and go to properties. You can do it like this, okay, so you can come to the details and the properties, and here it is here, okay. So this is the right here is the description for the image, which is the passphrase. So I'll just copy that, or you can just double click it and obviously go to right click and then just go to file info and it's right here. Okay, so it's just a description, the metadata, the description of the image. All right, that's it. So I drop the image in here. This is 10 years later. I need access to that data. I then put in the passphrase. Okay, and then I've got two options here. One is you can extract the data, okay, which will put a text file on your desktop with that data. But if you want it to be really, really secure and you don't want anything written to disk on your computer, you can simply select display, da display data like this, and it's going to give you all the information that is in your uh, image. And it's been extracted and it's right in front of you. Now, you're probably thinking, well, okay, I've got that here, but now what? How can I get it you know, out of here? Well, here's what's cool is that let's say, for example, you were extracting this data because you need one of these seed phrases and you need to restore a wallet okay so if i look at my phone here and i've got i've got trust wallet open okay now this device can be offline okay this is just an example but this device can be offline it doesn't need to be online so all i'm going to do is i'm going to come to wallets so in trust wallet here i'm going to come to wallets i'm going to click on the little plus i'm going to say add existing wallet okay I'm going to then choose secret phrase, all right? And then I'm just going to choose, for example, Bitcoin, okay? Now, right here, you can see secret phrase, okay? Up the top right, you'll see that little icon. That's a scan QR code. So that means that if we can do it, we can grab that seed phrase, air gapped, okay? So let me show you this. So what I did was I enabled this feature. So let me show you on this seed phrase right here. All you need to do, remember, this data is not written to disk. Okay, you didn't type it, you didn't do anything. All right. So if I grab this and just go over it and then right click, it'll create a QR code. 
pretty cool, eh? So all I need to do on the phone is click on that little icon to get the scan QR code, and then come over, scan that QR code, and now you can see we've got the seed phrase in here, all right? And all I need to do is just go restore wallet, all right? Start using Trust Wallet, and there is my account, okay? It's that simple, all right? And then when we're finished here, we just go clear data. Okay, and it's gone. It was never in memory to start with, but now it's cleared out of here as well. Okay, so that's the basic core functionality of the vault. All right, it was built for that purpose, was to make sure that you could back up any sensitive data. This could be pin numbers for your devices. It could be passphrases, seed phrases, private keys, whatever. You can back it all up in plain sight and never have to remember it. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, well, isn't that dangerous having your passphrase, you know, as your metadata and your image? Tell me something. How in this world will anyone ever know that the description of an image is the passphrase to anything? No one will ever know unless you tell them. Because like I said, no one is looking for images. No one is looking for data and images. Do you know that when hackers go, when they do their thing and you get scammed in it, it's not them doing the work. All they do is set up the contract. They set up the phishing sites. You do the work by going there and getting scammed. People don't go looking for this sort of thing. It's in plain sight. People don't look for this type of thing. For them, for somebody to even figure out that you had a passphrase as an image, first of all, they're gonna have to know the image that you've, first they're going to have to know that you've used a program to do this, then they're going to have to know what image it is, then they're going to have to know, you know, what the passphrase is, right, or how, uh, if the description is a passphrase, which is not going to happen. And then even if they did that, and they were able to get the data out, well, the, the thing is, is that if you follow my protocol, it doesn't matter if they get the data. And in fact, if you use the encryption option in there, which is an extra layer of security, they'd get scrambled data anyway. So there's ways of going even further with this. The point is, is that no one's going to know. And you can have this backed up in password managers. Do you know that last year there was a $4.4 million breach from LastPass, a password manager, and all of that $4.4 million was from seed phrases that were stored in that password manager. So if they had had an image in there that had their data embedded, no one would have lost their money. So this is the point. The point is to eliminate human error. You don't have to remember anything. It's all there in plain sight for you. Now, I'll just quickly go over another couple of things uh, in the vault here. Okay, so on the seed, you can actually generate your seed phrase through just, you know, and I always recommend a 24. Uh, you know, you can do it right here. I'm using the same library as the tool down here. This tool here, you can also do it down here. Now, remember, when you generate anything in this, nothing is in memory. Nothing is in memory, okay? So, you know, you can generate here and generate it at 24. I've also got an option. This doesn't support Solana. I've got an option where you can do Solana down here, okay? So that's the seed. That's where you can generate your seed phrase. Uh, I recommend actually rolling dice and doing it, you know, uh, manually and then inputting it like that and working out the words from that. You can do that offline. Uh, and then the embed one is obviously what I showed you. This is the the extra option where you can actually encrypt the data that's in there before you embed it in the image. So if you wanted to go that route, that's an extra step, but you could do that. Not that anyone's ever gonna know anyway, but you could do that, okay? Uh, and the extract, extract obviously is the two versions. Now the passphrase is where you can estimate. You can also, if your particular uh, passphrase isn't strong enough, you think it's not strong enough, you can always come down to the entropy enhancer and you can actually paste in your passphrase and it will strengthen it for you and give you something back that's a bit stronger. Then you can retest it, okay? So this is really cool. Uh, you can also generate straight off the 2048 word list, which is actually what's used to generate all the words and the seed phrases. Now the tools here, this is where you can watch list. You can get your Etherscan API and you can actually watch addresses. This is good for your hidden portfolio. It could be an early alert system just in case you do get compromised. Then you would know to go and quickly get your assets off your seed phrase, right? This is the URL checker, which enables you to when, you know how you get, a lot of people must get them as scam emails. 
I get one from a compromised email that I do on purpose to see what's going on with the scam world. But what, what you can do here is you can right click on the email that you get and get that URL and put it in here and then check it and it will actually show you the destination address. So it will show you the scam address, all right? Which is really handy. Now, Summer AI is incredible. This is AI that I've built and trained, okay? And what this enables you to do is I have a huge library of video tutorials that I have created myself that she has access to. So you can ask her for a specific tutorial and I've uh, created her in such a way that she is built specifically for that. So if I put in one word, she will bring back video tutorials. So let me show you, I'll use uh, FIO as an example, FIO with three domains. So I'll type that in there, okay? And she's gonna come back. Seems like you're interested in FIO, fantastic choice. Here are some video tutorials related to FIO. How to link addresses to your FIO handle. And it gives you a link right here. If I click on this, it's gonna bring it up right here, okay? Excuse me, so the first thing we're gonna do. Right here, okay? So it uses the actual, the Vaults browser right in here so you can watch it right here, okay? So it, you can see the tutorial, you can put in anything in here, you can put in MetaMask, you can put, put in whatever. And if there is a video tutorial in that database, she will provide a link for you, okay? And I'm updating this all the time. You can also request if there isn't one and she can't find it, she'll ask you to request it. And then you can just request it in the community, which you can scan. If you scan that QR code, you can join the community there, okay? So it's an amazing resource. And it's also with the courses that I have, she's actually a course companion. So while you're doing your lessons, you can actually use her to ask her questions as well on the course. Okay, so that's the extra added bonus with the AI, okay? So she's incredible. I use her a lot. Uh, and then this education tab, this is actually a security course that is built to basically get you prepared and get you set up so that you never lose crypto through losing your seed phrases or being scammed. All right, this is the way. This is the way, <laughs> Mandalorian. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's incredible. Now, this here is obviously only available. Uh, this version here is available with a... Uh, the security course that I have. You can ex access the courses from up here, but you, you won't have this version anyway. But you can access all the information from uh, my community. There is, like I said, there's a free version of this as well, which does the core functionality, uh, which is, you know, embed and extract, okay? So this is not a full version walkthrough of the vault, but I wanted to show you, uh, you know, what I've been up to, and it's evolved incredibly in the last year that I've been building it. Uh, a lot of people are using it now, uh, and a lot of people love it. And you'll you'll hear about that if you join the community. Uh, so yeah, it's a solution uh, for human error, uh, and you'll never have to worry about losing your data ever again. And I employ, if you're new to crypto, jump on this as fast as you can, because it will save you from a lot of headaches and a lot of frustrations and being pissed off and going into panic mode. Even if you're experienced, this is the way. <laughs> All right, so... Again, you can scan on that QR code. I'll leave a link in the description and as a pinned comment. Have yourself an amazing day. Kia kaha, stay strong, and I'll see you in the next video.